In the last video, we explored working with arrays and loops. We've also worked with variables, strings, conditionals, and we're really starting to sort of build up on our, our tools that we have available in JavaScript. Still, we're really only working with the log, console.log, which means you're only say, working with the console, I guess you could say. We're only seeing the values here. And I want to keep the values here for just a little bit longer. And then we're going to start talking about how we start to put the data here and when we pull data from there. And we'll be talking about that in a couple more lessons. So before we get there, there's this concept of a function. Now, if you're familiar with other uh, coding or, or development languages, uh, the function concept's pretty much the same. If you're brand new to it, the way I like to think about a function is like a little machine. It's a little reusable machine. And I give it some parameters or instructions and it performs its little task. And when I think about that as a little tiny machine, in that sense, we try to make a function not do too much. Meaning that the function or little machine should only have one purpose. Like it should only do that one thing, right? Maybe it's a, a adder, right? Let's do that. It basically is called an adder. And, when, and, and function names, you're gonna name it whatever you want as you go through them. So let's do one. So to set up a function, I'm going to say uh, function. Oops, helps if I spell it correctly. So function, and it looks like that. And then in right here with the parentheses here, I can then go and say the name of my function. I'm going to call my function adder. And adder is just going to add up things. So it looks kind of like a conditional in a way, right? With the brackets, I said function. It knows it's a function. It says adder, the function's name, the parentheses, and the brackets. So. To test this, I'm going to just do an alert and it's going to say adder ran semicolon. Now, if I run this and click refresh, you'll see that it did not run because I did not see that alert. Well, to run a function, so I set up the function, it didn't run. I need to run the function. To run the function, I come down here and I can reference it like that. So adder and refresh and now it says adder ran so notice that i just grabbed that first part there and it runs the function well that's it that's all a function is well i can do a little bit more than that so now i'm going to give it some parameters so i'm going to give it a parameter of number one and then i'm going to do a comma as in the first parameter and then number two as the second parameter. And what I want this to do is, I'm gonna go in here and say, we'll say uh, dollar sign total is equal to number one plus number two, semicolon. Then we'll take the value of total here and we'll alert the total value. So now if I run this, it says NAN, because it didn't get number one and number two. Well, that's because we need to send a value to it. So let's send a value. Well, that's really easy. We can say five and 10 here. And again, same kind of comma separated. Now, notice these aren't variables. I just passed in a number. So it's gonna take five, it's gonna replace it to number one. It's gonna take 10, replace it to number two. And then number one and number two are going to be set there. So now if I refresh, it gives me 15. So now this allows me to do some really cool math here very quickly and automatically adds up the values. Now, when we talk about a function being reusable, it means that I don't need to rewrite this code every time. It's set. I can go in there and pass it different numbers this time. And I will see the first alert, the second alert, and the third alert because I referenced it three times with three different series of numbers. 
So that's what we're talking about reusable, right? And that's the foundation there with functions is making our code reusable, making it so that I can go and reference it and give it different things as we can see that we've done here. So that's adder. Maybe I want to make another function. I always like to make this function called make cake. So it looks like that. Now when we get into function names, here's our first one, make cake. You got a choice here. You can put an underscore right there or you can do a camel case syntax. And camel case syntax means that second word is an uppercase. Right, so make cake. Now, as you go through some of the, the videos that we'll be doing here on Code Timer that we've already done, you'll see a mix. Sometimes it's by preference, sometimes it's by project. Uh, I have a tendency to name my functions a camel case, but then my variables, I like to use an underscore. It doesn't really matter. It's completely up to you. But whatever you do decide, just be consistent about that as you go through, as you learn more JavaScript. You may work at a company and they may prefer uh, their functions or their variables to be a certain way. And you'll just need to follow that. So I have this thing called make cake. And the first parameter here is going to be the type of cake. We'll spell that correctly. And the next one's going to be the size of the cake. All right. And then I need to go and make something with it. So look, okay, here we go. So I'm going to say when this goes, and I'm going to say return. All right. Now, this is new. We're going to say return this value. Now, instead of uh, like this, just an alert, I can't really do anything with that. It just alerts out the value. Return is going to return it to where it got called, which means I might be able to do something else with it, right? And most of the time you'll see your functions, they'll say return because then it doesn't limit the output of the function, which meaning I say the output, this one will always alert, right? If I need, if I call this function, it will always alert the value versus I could write the alert code around this, right? So I'm going to say return. And then I'll say the type of cake that is. So you want a, and then I'll say our concatenation with the plus type. So you want a type and then I'll put a plus and another one. Uh, and then we'll put a period, maybe an exclamation mark and a semicolon. Well, there's type, I need to put size in there. So you want a, and I'm gonna say space, single quotations again, and I'll put size in here. And then it will go and do, you want a space, and then let's imagine we said the word large, and then I'll use the word uh, type, which will be after it, but I need to put a space in between those two. So we'll do a space there like that. So you want a single, so there's our string, then concatenate the value of size. Then there's our string, which will allow us to put a space in between. And then the type, and then a space here, and then our secondary string cake. So there it's set up. Now let's go and run it. So I run it the same way I did the one, the other one. And now this time, instead of passing integers, I'm going to pass strings. So I want a, what kind of cake do we want? Uh, uh, vanilla. And I want a large. And we'll put a semicolon. Now, if we run this, we don't get any value in there, right? You can see our cat names, which I can comment this out. We don't need that anymore. We can see our, our doesn't run, doesn't show anything because it's just returned the value to here. So if I assigned this to a variable of cake, then I can say console.log the value cake. And we'll refresh and it says you want a large vanilla cake. Oh, that's nice. Well, I could always grab this and just stick this in here, right? I don't need the variable set up to do this. 
Notice there's only one semicolon there at the end of our lines. It would still work, but the idea what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that now I can take this and assign it to a variable. Whereas the adder in the previous example, I was not able to do that because it just alerts the value. Another example of this could be is I could take alert and wrap the alert around like this. And now when it runs, I got an error, syntax error. That's our first one. It says dollar sign cake not defined. I, looks like I made a mistake there. So click refresh and it says you want a large vanilla cake. And now it shows this as an alert. So that's our make cake function in JavaScript. Now you can go and put in different types. You can put conditionals in here, right? You can do everything we've learned so far. You could go and run inside there. So if it's a specific large cake, maybe we'll say if the size and there's our double equal is a large and maybe we're going to set this up so that it's a little bit smarter or it's an L and maybe I'll make it a little bit smarter yet from that I'm gonna say or it's a capital L then it's going to automatically go and figure this out so let's go and put an L here so now I want a and see where it says I want an I vanilla cake so or L vanilla cake so that doesn't work too much because I hard-coded the value here so instead of hard coding the value there where it says size, I could go and say uh, something like this now, which cleans it up a little bit. I want a large uh, cake. Else, meaning that it didn't match that pattern, I could go in here and say uh, I just want a, it didn't recognize any of those as large, I just want a blank cake. So now it says I want a large cake. I'm gonna change this to a small, what would be S, and click refresh, and it says you want vanilla cake. And that is how we would use functions. So let's review functions. They're like little machines. They're reusable. You wanna keep their purpose small. You can go and reference lots and make as many functions as you want. So think about when you make your function, what is its purpose? It's also a good idea to comment your function. And a couple different ways to do that. I prefer this, the two forward slashes. And again, and I pressed command forward slash to do that. And I could go in here and say, it creates a cake. And that's it. And I would name the function. Then down below, we used an alert to alert the value of make cake. In this next lesson, we're going to take everything we've made so far and we're going to show you how to add it to the DOM, how to actually manipulate the data that's here uh, instead of the data that's here.